Hey guys, it's Anna. Today I'm going to be giving you guys my bookshelf tour for the beginning portion of 2019. I'm actually filming this intro and outro sequence literally a month and a half after I filmed the rest of the video, which is why my bookshelves now look like this. I promise they look way better for the rest of the video. I wanted to go ahead and pre-film it because I knew that I was going to have to pack up books and start moving kind of around the time I was going to post it. I wanted to go ahead and clarify that so you weren't looking at these horrible shelves and thinking, I don't want to watch a video of her just sitting in front of crappy bookshelves and talking about them. I promise they look better than that. I wanted to film this intro though because I do have two questions that I get asked a lot about my bookshelves and I wanted to go ahead and talk about those. The first question that I get asked a ton is where I got my shelf from. So my bookshelf is actually just a very small bookshelf that came with the house that my mom purchased that we are living in. As far back as anyone knows, this bookshelf has always been with this house. I feel a little bad by taking it with me when I move out of this house, but at the same time, it's like, my bookshelf now and I don't really want to part ways with it. The second question that I want to very quickly address involves my organization methods. I don't organize my books. I have such like a small bookshelf situation that I feel like I can just walk into my room and look at the shelf and be like, that's the thing I need. So there is no real organization. And then what like little bits of organization there are, I explain in the video. All that being said, I will go ahead and show you guys the footage of my shelves when they were in their prime condition so that you guys can get a feel for like what I have on the shelf, what decorations I have, what books are my favorites. I hope you enjoy. So I can only get close-up shots because of how my tripod is. So I will start with this half of the bookshelf. I do have this butterfly case as decoration. I don't have a curtain on my window, so there's a big glare. You could see my hair. It's just these two butterflies. I believe I got this from Earthbound Trading Company. And then we have the new gaming section, which I guess is what I'm going to talk about the most for this portion. First, I'll mention that these are not all of my new gaming books. I have some other ones scattered here and there. Some are already in storage and some I have over at my father's house, but these are the ones that I have here on my main shelves, including my original OG copy of American Gods that you've probably all seen a bunch of times. It's got notes in it. It's got tape on it. It's just one of my prized book possessions. Another prized book possession I have is this copy of American Gods. This is the original Barnes & Noble Leatherbound Classic Edition. I do not think that these are being printed anymore. In fact, there is a new version of this same book and I liked this one better. I do own the new copy, but this is my favorite copy. It just, I feel like, encapsulates the vibe of American Gods so much better than the other one does. It also features a Nancy Boys, so it's like a two in one. And then behind it, I am hiding two other Neil Gaiman books, including a Nancy Boys and Neverwhere in these beautiful covers. These are the covers illustrated by Robert McGinnis. They are my favorite covers of any of Neil Gaiman's, so I'm hoping to collect all the books that come out with those covers. I also have Good Omens, which is by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. I plan on reading that very soon. And then I have Stardust, which if you remember, I read last year. It made my top books of the year list. And I also have The Graveyard Book, which is a childhood favorite. Moving over to the right side of the same shelf, I have some more favorites, including my only two remaining copies of the Miss Peregrine series. I used to have every single book. Don't know what happened to them. So now I only have Library of Souls, which is actually a signed copy and a map of days. I also have this little chapter sampler from when Library of Souls came out. Then there in the middle, of course, I have The Winter of the Witch. It is the third and final book in the Winter Night trilogy, which is my favorite fantasy series. So there's Winter of the Witch and then The Bear and the Nightingale. And then behind it is The Girl in the Tower. The Girl in the Tower is technically my favorite, but because I read an ARC copy of it, the front cover is a little weird so I just keep the winter of the witch there to make it look a little nicer and then I have when the sea is rising red by Kat Hellison this is one of my favorite books I need to reread it to see if that still holds true then I have the every heart a doorway series I just had the first two books in it then I have my most recent read as I'm filming this which is the lies of Locke Lamora then behind that I have red seas under red skies which is the sequel then over to the right of that I have the forest of hands and teeth series all of which are signed I got to meet Carrie Ryan my first year at y'all fest I love that series. It is one of my favorite book series, so I definitely wanted to keep that on my favorite shelf. And then I just have two kind of thriller novels that I read a while ago and enjoyed. They're not necessarily my favorites, but they fit really well in the space that was available, so I stuck them there. Moving down to the left side of the second shelf, I have some more colorful fantasy books, including some favorites and then some that I have not read. This one being the most notable of the ones I have not read. My rule for myself this year is if I do not finish reading it this year, then I have to get rid of it. I don't want to get rid of it. I know I'll like it, but it is a chunky 
book. And like I said, this is a continuation of my favorites shelf. So I do have some favorites over here, including Nimona and then Frog Kisser, which was my favorite book I read in 2017. And then I have The Goose Girl by Shannon Hale, which was my second favorite book that I read in 2018. Got some nice faves here. Behind The Goose Girl, I just have the rest of the series for when I want to read it. I'm actually planning on reading In a Burning for the Elementathon. I have links in the description for that if you are interested. Over here, I have some series that I either want to start or need to finish. I have the Bartimaeus trilogy, which I have not yet started, but it fit really well with this series, which is the Percy Jackson series, which I have started, so I stacked them. The second book in the series is another book I plan on reading for Elementathon. Up here, I have the first three books in the Vampire Kisses series by Ellen Schreiber. These were like my holy grail books in middle school. And then to the right side of that shelf is where my tentative TBR books go, I would say. These are the books that out of all of my TBR books, I'm most excited to get to, or I'm thinking I'm going to pick up sooner rather than later. Other than The Name of the Star, I have already read that one, but the rest of them are books that I plan on reading soon. Most notably, I have The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty on here. I really, really want to read that soon. I also have Alice by Christina Henry, and then this signed copy of The Madman's Daughter that I randomly found at a used bookstore. Those are definitely some hopefully soon to be read books. And then this is my bottom shelf. This is kind of where it starts to get a little jumbled. I don't really have any rhyme or reason to this bottom shelf. It's just kind of whatever looked good and would fit up here and that I wanted up here as opposed to anywhere else. I do have the Illumine files, the first two books. I have read Illumine. I read it last year but I didn't really want to put it up with my favorites shelves because it doesn't really fit the vibe. Like Illuminae is a very bright and colorful book and my other books are very dark. I also over here have the first two, actually I think this is book one and technically book three, in the Clockwork Century novels by Sherry Priest. Bone Shaker is a very, very good steampunk adult fantasy novel. If you are interested in that sort of thing, I would highly recommend it. And the cool thing about this series is that you can read the first one, and then after you read the first one, you can skip anywhere in the series, which is why I picked up number three and skipped number two. On the right side of that same bottom shelf, I have a series that I have read, which is the Asylum series. And then I have also read Bonfire on this shelf, as well as a couple others down there. But for the most part, these are books that I just didn't want to put anywhere else that are still either fantasy TBR books or books that I have read. Over here, though, are the few contemporary books that I like enough to want to keep on these shelves. Most notably is It's Kind of a Funny Story by Ned Fazzini. This is one of my favorite books of all time and definitely my favorite contemporary book of all time. It's just such a good read and I would highly recommend it if you are interested in books that involve mental health. I also have my two memory heart books here including my signed copy of I've Got This Round. Before I go up to the top part of the shelf I want to talk about these book stacks over here. I won't spend too long talking about these books just because it is horrible to capture them on film, but these are basically books that I have on my TBR and I would like to read. Not necessarily anytime soon, but I do want to read in the future. So I have them stacked over here because I have limited shelf space, so they get to be in stacks on the floor next to my bookshelves. So now we have hit my top portion of my shelves, aka the part where you're not really supposed to stack books, but I put books anyway. So starting over on the left side, I have, first of all, this really cute mug. I think I got this at TJ Maxx or maybe a Home Goods. It gave me like Harry Potter vibes, I think because of the glasses, but it was just this cute little cup and I wanted to put some bookmarks in it. So I have a ton of bookmarks sitting in here. I also have this little Polaroid frame and the Polaroid picture that I have in it is of these black eyed Susans. They are my favorite flower, so I wanted to have that framed on my bookshelf. As for the books, there really is no rhyme or reason. They're just books that I didn't put anywhere else and they looked nice together. I have A Torch Against the Night, but not An Ember in the Ashes. I have Stalking Jack the Ripper. I have Last Call at the Nightshade Lounge up here. I also have Circe by Madeline Miller up here, which is a beautiful cover. Then on the right side of the shelf, I have really only one decoration and it is this letterbox. It's supposed to light up, but I can't figure out how to work it. I got it on sale, so I think it's broken technically. So I just keep the letters in it for Anna and then I and BW, like it's my birthright. And then behind that, I have a stack of random books. That's the theme for this entire upper portion of the shelf. I have my art copy of My Plain Jane. I have my two Bison Gas Collector's Editions. I have the first three books in the original Shatter Me trilogy. And then my favorite thing on this shelf is definitely my film comic for Spirited Away. It's literally just a comic version of the first portion of the film. That's actually one of my favorite scenes of the entire movie. One other thing I have on the shelf that's really cool is this set. 
of Harry Potter cassettes for The Order of the Phoenix. It's just all of the cassette tapes in order to listen to The Order of the Phoenix. I think it's just a really neat Harry Potter thing to have. I don't know where the top of the box is, but I just keep it on my shelf because I just think it's like a cool thing to have. So here is a shot of the bookshelf that I have kind of like floating above my other shelves. So this upper left side is kind of where I keep what Harry Potter books I have over here. My Harry Potter book collection is kind of scattered between two different places. As you can see, I do have various different versions of Harry Potter books. I have hardcover copies of the like OG run. And then I also have really small little paperback versions. It's kind of a mixture with this series. Also sitting on top of there, I have this Ziploc bag. It's kind of hard to see, but it has like this little dried flower in it. My boyfriend actually picked me this flower a long time ago and I've just kept it pressed in this little bag. Also over here, I do have two different fancy looking books. I have the Divine Comedy. This is one of the Barnes and Noble Love Around classic editions. And then I also have this copy of Huckleberry Finn that I love so much. It belonged to my great grandmother. And when we were cleaning out her house after she passed away, somebody found it and they said, Anna really needs this. So I have it with me. I love it. It. I'm not necessarily sure like how old it is or when she got it or what the history of her having it was. All I know is that it's nice looking and it is also a book that belonged to my great grandmother. So I'm very happy to have it on my shelves. Also tucked in there to the side of Huckleberry Finn, I have this poster. This was an exclusive poster that I came, I believe with the purchase of The Cursed Child from Target. That is what it looks like unfurled. I'm hoping to frame it at some point when I move into my new place. And then over here is the right side of my upper shelf. I have a couple different books kind of scattered. I actually really like the way that this corner looks. On the left I have Bitter Blue and Fire which are I think the second and then like a companion book or maybe a prequel to the Graceling trilogy. Graceling I do own. It is just in storage. I haven't read it but for some reason I have these two separate from that one. Then over here I do have a stack of six Supernatural books. I've read two of them. I thought they were okay. I also have some decorations on the shelf, two of which are these tiny little books. The first one is Alice in Wonderland and the second one is A Man Without a Country. And they are actually the little books themselves. Like they've got words in them, they've got tiny illustrations, they're just very cute. Another decoration object I have is this Polaroid frame. This is the second Polaroid frame I have on my shelf. This one has a black background and it is probably my favorite of the two. It has a Polaroid picture of my shelves from when I had very few books. So it's kind of neat looking back on them and seeing how my organization has changed. Then back behind where I would normally put the Polaroid picture back, I have three of my books from the series of Unfortunate Events series, including The Miserable Mill, which definitely has like my favorite cover out of the entire series because I love Klaus. On this shelf I also have my art copy of Tess of the Road. I got this at Y'all Fest and every time I look at this book I just think about how happy Y'all Fest 2017 made me. I got to meet Raina who is one of my favorite booktubers and she's just like such a nice sweet human. I still haven't read it but it brings back lots of fond memories. I also have this edition of The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. This is the Penguin Horror edition. I really love these editions. They've got these nice black sprayed edges. They've got just like these nice watercolor kind of fronts and backs and they also have a foreword in them by Guillermo del Toro. Then over over here over to the right I have a poster of the golden trio including Scabbers from my favorite of the Harry Potter movies. This is obviously from Prisoner of Azkaban. I just love it so much so I have that up there and this poster has been hanging in my room I want to say like six years seven years it was hanging in the room I lived in before we moved to this house so it's been with me for a while. So that is it for my bookshelf tour for the early part of 2019. I really hope you guys enjoyed getting a closer look at the bookshelf that you guys see behind me in every video. I'm excited to see in a year what it's gonna look like then. This will be fun to look back on in the future. Hi, future Anna. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you guys have a bookshelf tour or have like one that you really liked, just drop a link to it in the comments or let me know. I would love to watch it. If you liked the video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe on your way out. I will see you next time I post a book video.